Hi, I'm Benjamin Law. I'm the creator and co-writer of The Family Law. We're here on the very glamorous set of The Family Law, which is also a very vast warehouse that is big enough to probably build a ship in or build a shop in, which we've literally done. And right next to me is Sophie Miller, and she's the head honcho and the showrunner of The Family Law. After series one finishes, we come into the writer's room yep. and we have to think about making a whole new show. But yeah. in a way, We've established what the world is, yes. and we need to think about what happens to the family next. Um, yeah, so I think the starting point is um, where we end. Mm. You know, where we end that series, what we think would be the most interesting story to pick up. I mm -hmm. mean, obviously, we end with quite a dramatic res resolve, yeah. which is the separation. Because the whole first series is the whole question of will they, won't they yeah. get back together? And then by the finale, what I imagine a lot of people were hoping for is, oh, they're such a love, they're, they're such a great family. Hopefully, these parents can can fix it and and make it work. But what's what what we kind of arrive to by the end of series one is they realize they can make it work but it's better if they do it apart and in fact that's actually crucial for yep. them making it work as well but i think they end off a little bit optimistically yes <laughs> yes i think that it, you know it's a bittersweet in that i think that one of the interesting things when you're watching it is we've been so hardwired to expect a happy ending. Mm. So even though you're go watching the whole time going, will they, won't they, you're hoping, oh, it's a TV show. You know, of course they'll get back together. And then they don't. And so part of you is going, oh no, they're breaking up. But then also that's the truth that yeah. we're always striving for. So I think it's bittersweet. And it is optimistic. I think that we, we end on a, on a really optimistic note and we pick that up. Yeah. We start full of hope and optimism and then we... And then we demolish yeah, it. Yeah, totally. Well, I think a reality check is always a yeah. really healthy thing, both yeah. for audiences and characters as well. Yeah. And when you come to the end of episode six in series one, it's Ben saying, you know, some families are like this and some families are like this and that's totally okay and we can make it work. And even Jenny and Danny are thinking, yeah, we're going to make it work. Mm. And then we launch into series two, and it does seem like it is working for a while, but they still haven't really addressed some fundamental problems with their relationship in the first place as well, and maybe not even thought about the realities of what um, what I like to call a post-nuclear family yes. looks like. Like This is literally a post-nuclear yes. fallout. Yes. And they need to figure out what a family like this looks like and how it works as yeah. well and th those are two big challenges because I think most families have to kind of really figure that out for themselves there's no template yeah and you and you sort of have to it's, you stumble through it as well I think you know I think one of the things that is really interesting is that you you know we pick up series two and it's raw mm. it's still raw the pain and wounds are still fresh so we start you know, this is this is going to work out okay, but inevitably there's pain there, there's hurt mm. there, it's messy. Yep. You know, and people, for all their best intentions, particularly the parents, are trying their best for this to work out, but you know, they've still got their own feelings to deal with. Mm. And so we really examine that. And I think beyond that, the other optimism is how they can achieve their dreams together yes. as yes. well. Yes. And when you think of like the three core characters, Benjamin, Jenny, Danny, they have all decided, well, you know, Ben from the right at the yeah. start anyway, but they've decided to pursue their version of their dream yep. or what, or they're trying to find what their dream is. So, you know, with Ben's journey, wanting to be a star as yes. always, yes. Um, whether it's pursuing school captaincy or pursuing the lead in the play, Jenny, she's trying to find what her think, dream is. I think that's the thing. As it's, well. it's mostly the searching. Yeah. For Jenny, she's really searching. She, she ends series one. And I think the, the interesting journey for Jenny in this series is that she starts, she thinks at the end of series one that that is actually the answer to her problems. That's the answer mm. to why she's been feeling all these things. And she starts off series two going, okay, I've done that. Why do I feel this gap still? Why yeah. is there still that emptiness? And so she goes on this, you know, on this journey to really find where she fits. There's that conversation at the end of series one between Jenny and Danny where um, he now knows what his dream is, yes. which is, 
I'm going to make this new business venture yeah. and we're going to do it together. That part of the dream doesn't work out, but at least he knows what that other part of mm. his dream is. Mm. And for Jenny, she says, you know, I don't know what my dream is, but I'm really keen to find out. And I think for a lot of people, but especially mums as their kids grow up, yeah. especially women if they're coming out of a marriage as well, like what is your identity? What are your goals beyond motherhood and beyond being a spouse as well? And I think that can be hugely confronting for people yeah. as well. And I think that's what Jenny finds in this series as well, which is now I've come out of that and I've shed those shackles behind. What does, what does my dream actually look like? And what do I actually want for myself as Jenny, as this self-contained person? You know, that can be really hard. And I've been, I mean, I think it's, it's almost like a coming of age for Jenny. And, and it's like, this is her moment. She's still got enough life to make some serious change. And she's really cognizant of that. Mm. But she doesn't know what to do with it. She knows she wants something. She knows she's reaching for something but she doesn't know what the answers are. And I think that that was one of the things we were always reaching for in the writing room is it is very much about being a mother and, and a, a, a spouse, but it's also for anyone that's dared to reach, to look around and go, there's more, but I don't know what it is, but I know I want more. And I think that that was one of the things, that was one of the discoveries in the writing room, wasn't it? And it also feels like in series two, especially, I mean, Benjamin Law is obviously in his teen years, he's going through yeah. puberty, yeah. but it's like all the characters are really changing and growing. And obviously with Jenny, she's, she's facing this huge juncture in her life. Danny is embarking on a whole new version of himself as well and also you know possibly entertaining romance what mm. does that look mm. like as well mm. what does it like what does it feel like to be in the midst of a new romance and to navigate that with your old life as mm. well but even all the other siblings as well i mean andrew's growing up in pretty clear ways yes, yes. candy's going to find out what it means to belong to a new family yeah. as well yeah. um tammy's finding growing pains difficult too and i think even michelle we see probably is finding out that her family's more fallible than she thought. Yeah. And I think every family member, you know, change is all always valorized in society as this great thing that we need to embrace. But one of the things that we don't often pay attention to is change can be hard and it can be painful. Yeah, exactly. It usually is. Mm. Um, I think the other thing that would be interesting to talk about is how how the stories come about because obviously mm. you know we have the book from f as the very origin and we have you and your family yes, thank you. so <laughs> i guess in series two where we started how we crafted these stories and what our process is mm. well i think we even in when, when we were writing series one i remembered we had hunches like yeah. if this is what series one is yeah I would love to explore X, Y, and Z in series two. And one of the things was probably Asian, uh, Danny pursuing Asian Alley as yep. his new business venture as well. There are a lot of uh, unresolved things about series one that we clearly needed to answer both for ourselves and for the audience as well. So questions that were left hanging was, well, after Ben and Melissa have that very awkward kiss in the series finale, well, where does that leave yeah. their relationship? And it's such a teen drama as well, that line. Should we stop? No, no, <laughs> Just pause stand, there. Stand by. Stand by, stand by. This stand is, by. This is, uh, well, that was like a, that was like it was haunted. <laughs> this warehouse at night would be creepy. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Take two. Keep Thank going. Um, yeah, and uh, there were a lot of unanswered questions at the end of series one as well. So Ben and Melissa, after that excruciating teen kiss that went yes. wrong. Yes, yes, that kiss. That kiss. Where do you it's go from it's that? It's our series one cliffhanger. Absolutely, and I think that's a really common thing mm. in your teen years to not know where the line is between mm. friendship and romance mm. as well. So Ben and Melissa have that to answer. That was something that we were definitely going to explore. Um, and also the other question as well is, well, Candy and Wayne are now yep. engaged. So yep. what is that journey going to look like moving mm -hmm. forward as well? Um, and I guess there were other things that we were keen to explore, like how more insane can the costumes get this series? Yes, <laughs> yes. And Andrew's desire to lose his virginity. His V plates. Yep, mm. yep. That was really something well, you know, that was on. Him and Heidi are getting close as well. And we've already seen the textures of their relationship in series one where, you know, Andrew can screw up in the way that he approaches his relationship with Heidi. Yeah. Where do we go on from there as well? So there are all these questions that we wanted to pick up on. And then the nuts and bolts of like, mm. we, we get together oh, and yeah. we start to just 
talk about, okay, this is where we've ended, series one, what are the big picture ideas that we want to explore in series two? Mm. And then it's a really, it's a very organic process it's between you and I and Kirsty Fisher, who is mm -hmm. the third banana. The third, we're going to say third <laughs> wheel, but that doesn't no, make that, no, I was say no. Third, but that's not right. That's we just, right. we just want to VFX her I into know, here we, because we she's so crucial. We can do that in post, can't we? We yeah, can just totally. pop, we can just, <laughs> just be like a hologram. But it really is this tight circle, and often, yep. you know, Lawrence is in the room yep. as well. Lawrence, who wrote, yep. um, yeah, that's a, that was a new addition to the team. Absolutely, and you know, our, our trusty executive producers are in and out of that room as well, giving us lots of good feedback, and Julie Eckersley too. Yeah, and then. Um, I guess from there, it's funny when people ask me what the writing process mm. is like, I think because the book exists, they just assume, well, you've got the source material, you translate that into the TV show. And first of all, the book has barely any structure. So it's only source material to an extent. And I think what's really great about this writer's room in particular is that as much as we're focusing on a family inspired by my own, we're looking at pretty universal themes mm. of regenerating and change and parenthood and childhood, what it's like to be a sibling as well, um, you know, what it's like to be a parent seeing a child struggle, yeah, especially like in episode one as well. And that's something I think everyone brings into yeah, the Yeah, we're room. always lifting, we're always sort of lifting things from our own lives, but then it's always got the the family law prism so yep. we we'll find a story we'll get excited about the story we're like is this on character is this true is this something that would mm. happen to our family and then the the weird thing is that often we'll find something from life we'll come we'll pitch it we'll work it and then ben will go actually like this that. happened <laughs> it's very familiar i wonder why that is oh it happened kind of in real life so it's um, this kind of very circular process mm, isn't it it's really interesting absolutely um and i feel like the writer's room is always like partly a very good dinner party you've got a very well curated batch of people and you've got really good conversation and as much as the conversation is always about the show it's about our own lives as well yeah. and um, so I've I, I feel like I know your family inside it's out confessional. I feel like I know, it's yeah. very conf it's quite it's I think a we know Kirstie's family inside out even though I haven't met them yeah. either because sorry Kirstie's family but <laughs> we <laughs> but we do talk about what those experiences are like and we translate them into something more specific mm. for the laws because if there isn't that emotional truth and I know the family law is a comedy ostensibly mm. but we are really looking for those dramatic um, rhythms that punctuate a family's life as yeah well. it's all it, I mean that is the ultimate guiding principle is we can get so excited about an idea and then we start to shape it and if there's a whiff of anything about it that doesn't have the truth mm. it you know, we either have to work it to find the truth or we turf it. Yep. And our contract with the audience is, yeah, look, it's a comedy. We're going to make you laugh, but we're going to punch you in the guts yep. first. Yeah, that is. Uh, yeah. And if we're not achieving both of those things, it's not working. And we, when we do script it like a drama first and then trust the laughs will come organically because they are a funny bunch of characters as well. But beyond that, we we know that the heart of the show has to come before anything else. Yep. yep. And the comedy, the comedy in the family law really comes from character. Yeah. You know, we, we don't impose it. We don't impose gags on, on the characters. They, so that, that can be the temptation. And that's, that's always the line that we trade, isn't it? Mm. Mm.